Hi there, well this uh, little Stuart 10V is really starting to uh, come along now. So um, today I'm going to have a go at machining the conrod. Okay, so the uh, conrod is made out of this piece of brass and the book refers to it as a brass stamping. Now, uh, the first phase is to machine out the big end. Uh, but before tackling that, uh, we need to drill a couple of holes uh, from this end to this end right through and then we cut this in half and then we join it up again, we bolt it back up again and then we machine out the big end now uh, at the moment I'm a bit unsure how best to hold this in the vise um, so I'll have a bit of a play around and then I'll get back to you. So it's just occurred to me that uh, before I uh, put this in, in the vise to drill these holes uh, I really need to um, make this, uh, this area flat so um, I'll do a bit of work with a hand file um, just to make sure it is flat because if it isn't flat then when I start drilling potentially uh, the drill could wander off. Well, I've certainly not got my brain into gear at the moment. Um, so I've tidied it up with the hand file, and then it occurred to me that it might be an idea to mark it up before putting it in the uh, in the vise or whatever I'm going to hold it with. Um, so I've uh, determined a centre line here, and um, also a centre line down the side, and. Um, I've transferred this across onto the end and um, marked uh, two positions here, half inch between centres. So this is where I'll drill uh, the 7BA clear holes which will be 2.6mm in diameter. Okay so uh, my convoluted uh, solution to this problem is to use um, an independent four, four jaw chuck. and. Um, I've placed the conrod in there, um, tightened up all four jaws and that actually means that it's going to be pretty much perpendicular um, to the base so um, I can quite confidently I think uh, drill holes which will be dead straight. Um, so uh, to help secure the chuck um, to the table I've pushed it up against uh, the vice um, supports and also I've uh, just bolted it down uh, using that combination of uh, blocks and tackle so um, I, th I think we're good to go I've uh, put a, a wiggler on and uh, that looks pretty much spot on for the first hole. So I'll centre drill and then I'll drill to 7BA clear which is 2.6mm. Well that's a shame. Um, my centre drill is just too wide so it's, it's going to catch this. I think it's a chucking spigot and I'm not too sure if I need that um, at some point. So I'm a bit reluctant to chop it off. So um, I think my only option here is just to um, risk it and uh, drill with my 2.6mm uh, drill bit without centering first. So I'll repeat the process on the other side off camera. Well the uh, drilling of the holes turned out really well. 
so very happy with uh, with that result and uh, now it's time to cut this in half so I need to cut down here um, but unfortunately uh, I had been planning on using this slitting saw and something like this collet chuck arrangement um, but having looked at it I don't think there's enough gap here and I think it's going to catch very very close so um, I think I need to think uh, of another method of, of doing this so uh, time for a coffee break well this is the uh, contraption I've come up with so I've got a rotary table bolted down onto the milling table um, I've got a Jacobs chuck uh, with a uh, two moss taper so that's been sort of pushed in there so that's not going to move um, I've attached the con rod to the Jacobs chuck and I've positioned the cutter halfway down now there's still a, fa a fantastic amount of gap there there's probably only about ooh, I don't know three or four millimeters so it's not going to go right through however uh, I've got the ability to rotate the table round so I, I think I'll be able to uh, remove quite a bit of material and I might just have to end up finishing it off with a hacksaw so I'll be turning this uh, slitting saw around about 275 rpm <laughs> Well that is ever so close, so I'll uh, just use the uh, little hacksaw to finish it off. Well after separating it with the uh, little uh, hacksaw, uh, it left a nub on each of these faces. So I just uh, got rid of that using an end mill. And the join is absolutely fantastic. So I was over the moon with that. And then I decided to start marking out for the centres. Now obviously one of the centres, well the centre for the big end needs to be on that join. And the distance between centres uh, is 1 and 11 sixteenths so I measured from there from the join up to here and it was way off center and I, I've now realized that in order for the hole for the little end to be centered the hole for the big end needs to be around about 50 thou away from where the actual cut is so I think my only option here is to mill that down until I get um, a quarter of an inch width there and likewise on this one I'll mill this piece down until I get a quarter of an inch so I'll make up the full half inch and the join will then be exactly um, 1 and 11 sixteenths from the little end. So I'm, I'm not too sure how I'm, how I'm going to go about uh, doing this milling uh, in terms of how I'm going to hold it um, but uh, I'll give it a bit of thought and uh, I'll get back to you. Well I've managed to um, hold the long piece of the conrod in the vise um, supported with some parallels. Um, 
I'm, I'm pretty happy with the accuracy of the surface as it is at the moment so I've just touched the tool on each corner just to make sure it reads zero and it does um, so I'm happy that the piece is sort of sat correctly and that is parallel with the top of the vise so what I'll do off camera is I'll just skim off um, 50 thou uh, cutting at probably 10 thou increments well the milling worked very well uh, I, I milled both faces and that is absolutely spot on uh, I couldn't wish for better and the distance between centres needs to be 1 and 11 sixteenths. Now 11 sixteenths is 0 0.6875. So I'm looking for 1.6875. So that'll be from the join to the centre of the little end. And again that's spot on. So I'm, I'm really, really happy so far. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put this in the three jaw chuck on this spigot and I'll, I'll just put a dial gauge on here to make sure that it's running reasonably true and I'm just going to take a couple of thou off these sides here um, just to trim it up and having done that it will enable me to uh, calculate a bit more accurate, uh, accurately the centre line as to where the big end will uh, be drilled Well the machining works out very well and you can't even see a join now um, but I've just come across another problem and it's not of my making the actual brass stamping is, is way out because if you put a line across the back here the little end isn't at 90 degrees So, I've really got no option but to proceed here. Um, but I'm, I'm guessing I'm going to have to start the whole sort of off centre like that, so it so it goes sort of like at that angle. Obviously, not ideal. Uh, but like I say, I don't think I have any other options. Well, I've uh, marked everything up and put a wiggler on. And uh, that is spot on centre for the big end. So I've uh, locked the uh, Y axis. I'm just going to move it, up, move this along to see if the wiggler corresponds with the lines I've drawn. And it, it does actually. I was expecting it to be more offset to that side because the end is sort of like at that angle um, but anyway I've, I've no real options to but to proceed um, but it's, it's going to come out of this other end a bit a bit strange so um, I've offered some support here uh, near the small end and um, the reason being uh, I need to carry out the drilling of the small end as soon as I've done the big end because the need to maintain parallelism um, so with the big end I'm going to start with a centre drill then I'll probably go to a 3mm then a 4, then a 5, then a 6, then a 6.8 and then I'll ream to 9 30 seconds of an inch. I'll do all that off camera and then I'll get back to you when I'm starting this hole. Well the uh, big end seems to have worked okay and um, I've just moved the x-axis um, 1 and 11 sixteenths of an inch uh, which is equivalent to 42.86 so I've used the dial to, to move it across and this little wiggler is spot on. Um, now I know the brass is out of shape but I'm just going to um, carry on 
based upon the dimensions and the markings I've got here and we'll just see what the result like looks like at the other end so I'll centre drill I'll drill uh, 3 millimeters, then 3.7 and then I'll ream to 5 30 seconds of an inch but I'll do all that off camera wow I nearly messed up there um, I was drilling with the 3 millimeter drill bit and it sudden, I suddenly realised that the other end needs to be tapped to 5BA so um, I only need to drill right through with a 2.65 millimetre drill bit so I've just switched this round uh, I'm very fortunate because I must have only got about halfway with the 3 millimetre so what I'll do is I'll drill 2.65 right the way through then um, for half the depth I'll drill 3 millimetres then 3.7 and then I'll ream it so while I'm here I might as well do the uh, tapping of the uh, 5BA thread through to the other side well it's a real shame that this uh, brass is out of shape and it uh, did come out the other end off centre as I suspected it would but anyway let's uh, crack on so I'm uh, using a 6mm end mill to uh, mill out the small end So that's uh, worked out pretty well, quite nice and tidy. So all I need to do now is to take uh, round about 24 or 25 thou off each side so it can fit between the crank webs. Okay so I've uh, milled the sides um, so that's a nice fit between the crank webs but now what I need to do is to remove some more material round here uh, to create this sort of like a raised edge um, so effectively um, I'm reducing the width here to a quarter of an inch and the raised bit um, will need to be 13, 30 seconds of an inch in diameter and the raised bit will be the same width as it is now um, if that sort of makes sense um, now in order to do this uh, off camera I made this little bush, so it's a threaded bush, M6 thread, and I've put it on this uh, bolt with the idea of just pushing that in there, it's a, it's a very snug fit. I'm going to put a nut on here, and then I'm going to put it in the three jaw chuck, so that will hopefully enable me to do this little bit of machining. Well unfortunately there wasn't uh, room to uh, get in uh, to make the cut on the lathe so uh, I've used this uh, collet chuck on the um, rotary table so um, it's just a matter of taking 30 thou off each side Well, that worked out pretty well. Spot on a quarter of an inch across now, and so it's just a matter of um, removing the spigot, and uh, that's it. 
Well, that certainly uh, turned out to be eventful, and uh, I really nearly did mess up uh, on this little end. And I was quite fortunate in a way that I just remembered in time not to drill right through with that uh, three millimetre drill bit. Um, but anyway, um, it seems to have worked out okay. Uh, the only sort of negative thing I've got with it is the fact that the stamping is slightly out of alignment, and I don't know how that might happen. Um, so it's more of a cosmetic thing, I think, because I've actually done all the machining to the spec. Um, it's just when you look at the side of it, um, obviously one of the holes is, is out. Um, but having said that, um, I think most of that's within the standard anyway, so it shouldn't be overly obvious. Um, but the big end turns superbly. Really happy with that. Um, so this little engine is really starting to come along now. And uh, I hope you like the results so far. Oh, and what have I learnt? Um, I, I can't believe I've managed to go all this time without uh, having a wiggler and uh, built the S50 uh, without the knowledge of a wiggler and it was a real pain trying to get the centre of, of things but the wiggler's fantastic so if you haven't got one I'd recommend you get one. <laughs> 